A short squeeze is underway in the Canadian cannabis sector. Will the U.S. stocks benefit? Is it time to sell all your U.S. stocks for Canadian names? I'm just kidding. We're going to check in on the charts in all the sectors, including psychedelics. Let's get to it. Hey, I'm Charlie Man Dan with the Chart Guys. I've been trading cannabis stocks for the last 13 and a half years and appreciate all the likes and the shares and the content support. Last weekend's video was the highest views and interactions that we've had in the last bunch of months. And the more that continues, the more we're going to keep making content. So thanks again. All right, lots to talk about in this video. So obviously the Canadian names getting a, a large move up. U.S. names had a pretty good week overall as well. Going to talk about how I've been trading things a bit, going into a bit more detail there. But uh, we'll start with the U.S. side, just as that's what we've normally been doing. And there is a scenario, so fundamental check-in. Again, the video last weekend, I did a lot more in-depth fundamental outline but as far as this week, you know, there was a headline that the FDA supports rescheduling of cannabis. That's not really anything new. So it wasn't really a needle mover. In my opinion, we did see a big move up uh, Thursday afternoon in the U.S. sector. Some of that, in my opinion, was spurred on by a $1.2 million uh, options bet for, I think it was November, $20 calls, $1.2 million. But again, we have to keep in mind, that could easily be a hedge. Someone could be very short and could be grabbing that as a hedge for the long side. So have to keep that in mind as well. We can only make assumptions about what it means, but we can't say the bulls came out in a big way on Thursday. Not really much follow through Friday, but held steady, held the gains. That's a good thing. And we're noticing a pattern now where we're going from Canadian names to U.S. names one day to the next, just as far as, you know, where is the focus? And as a full-time trader, that's an observation that we want to be making because it helps us know where to focus. And it's happened in the past, but not to this degree. You know, normally it's like, well, the Canadian names were up 8% today and the U.S. names were up 4%. So they're very similar, just a bit different. Whereas uh, on Friday, there was a period of time where these Canadian names are up. Most of them were up 10 to 12%. CGC was up 30 plus percent at a point in time. And the U.S. sector was all red at that point. And so that kind of, you know, discrepancy between the two is, a, is much less common. But again, just looking at observations and able to say, you know, focus on Canadian names. So 17 minutes into the day, remember, we have not been seeing U.S. and Canadian names run together on the same day. CGC is trying to say it is Canada Day. And so we could see the CGC volume, CGC leading the way, focus on Canadian names just for this day if you're day trading or looking to capitalize on that opportunity. And obviously from that point forward, CGC did nothing but run. U.S. cannabis dropped about 4% from, that was pretty much the high of the day, dropped 4%. And then the other Canadian names benefited as well. So again, just little observations that we want to be making on a short-term basis. And if you look back at the video from last weekend, you know, I've been dogging on CGC and TLRY for a really long time, just saying, you know, the bulls aren't proving anything. Nothing changes if we keep setting lower highs. And this clip, I'm going to show a quick clip here because it is a perfect example of what being a full-time trader is that so many people have misconceptions about. I don't make a prediction in this clip, but what I do is I use technical analysis to look back at previous data. I make observations of previous data and patterns because humans love routine and they love being subject to their emotions. So we see the same patterns often repeating. And so, you know, I couldn't say a short squeeze is coming. But I could say, I know what I'm looking for to be keeping an eye out for a short squeeze. So this move isn't surprising. And while, you know, I'm not predicting things and putting half of my account in CGC and swinging it for an entire week, every single day I sit down on the computer and I look long in these names and I just keep getting my piece of the pie. And, you know, I didn't have a huge move on these Canadian names, but in a few days, able to get a couple weeks worth of gains. And again, just observations and, and having liquid capital to be able to move around. But let's look at this quick real Clip real quick, and then we'll check back in on the charts looking forward. Showing, you know, the kinds of moves when momentum gets going, there's a 100% move. And so again, there, there are short squeeze possibilities because I don't need to even look at, you know, a lot of people look at short data and that's fine. I don't look at it. I don't need to. I know there's a bunch of shorts on this name because I know as a technical analyst and a trader, being bearish on this name is the right thing to be doing. And now that's changing, obviously. So, you know, I'd be covering Friday if I'm a bear just to protect, but um, I just know that there's a lot of bears because that's the right direction of this chart. And now it's the bulls trying to change that and trying to shift things. And CGC is the exact same. Every single move 
is just a lower high. Lower high. Look at how many bear flags. Bear flag confirmed. Bear flag confirmed. Bear flag confirmed. And we're dropping down now. Again, just talked about the euphoria run. Look at this pullback. How do we go from five sixty-five to three dollars? Dilution, reverse splits. This is this stock's never going back to all-time highs, in my opinion. That's I don't make bold, you know, statements like that often. But when I'm real confident, I do not think this name will ever go back near all-time highs because of the dilution. It's not the same company. You know, buying buying. 10,000 shares back here, you're owning a fraction of the company as to buying $10,000 now. It's a, it's a very different share structure at this point. But again, same thing. They ran it up after hours, you know, 355. That's a potential solid gap up open on Monday. I do expect some of that will be given back before the open on Monday. But again, that'll give the space to say, okay, we've broken lower high. Something's a bit different. Can we confirm a daily uptrend as the result of the next pullback. And again, just looking at the little short squeezes here for trading, these names are for trading, but this was a short squeeze back in August where we shoot up from three to 400 or 400%, three to 19. And what happened here was the MSOS names were already running and were starting to chill out a little bit. And then we you know, went up to, to 100% move in a couple of days. That's a short squeeze because why? Look at how, look at this bear control. You know there's shorts all over this. It's the easiest bear chart in the world until the volume shows up and causes a mini squeeze. So the reason I keep an eye on these names is for the potential that they get the fast hard squeezes when the volume really starts coming in. But if you're looking longer term, the share structure, the fundamental of these companies, potentially not as uh, well positioned as some of these US names. All right, so what's the takeaway from that? Again, looking back historically. So a lot of people are gonna look at that and say, oh, Dan was so bearish these names and he was dead wrong. When in reality, it takes me two minutes to flip my bias and recognize, hey, we got volume. This is looking like a short squeeze and be able to benefit from that. And again, I'm not nailing the bottom and selling the top. I'm just getting the meat in the middle to take my piece of the pie. I didn't even swing any of these names throughout the week. It was just day trades every day and able to capitalize on that opportunity. But let's look at this rotation real quick. So MSOS bulls, and again, I talked about it in HHS. In HHS, the reaction back here, MSOS shot up for a couple of days, and then while it traded sideways, that right there is when the Canadian names shot up another 100%. And so what do we have going on here? A pattern, the same thing. MSOS bulls shoot up from the 13th to the 18th. Then after the 18th, we chill sideways, and what happens on the 18th? This is CGC on the 18th, and it's been nothing but short squeeze since then. So we have a pattern where when there's a hard, fast move on MSOs and the Canadian names are not really benefiting, once MSOS tops out and starts to consolidate, that's when we look to the laggard move out of these Canadian names. Something to be keeping an eye on going forward. We've got all these little clues of observations that we can make to help us get in good risk low reward scenarios, wrong way, low risk, high reward scenarios to be able to benefit from trading. So we'll talk more about the short squeeze and whether it's done or not, or what we're looking at from here, but MSOS. So the most important support for me right now is the daily higher low of 877. And there's a scenario here where, again, we got no concrete headline yet. And I know probabilities shift when Kamala Harris says whatever, but it's still not a concrete headline. We might not hear, we could hear from the DEA next week. We might not hear from the DEA for three months. We just don't know. So if we don't have a concrete headline, I would not be surprised. And I'm going to be watching, you know, are we going to set a lower high here? It would not be surprising to just tighten up on this weekly time frame into April and perhaps through a good bit of April. But what's the indication that a weekly lower high compared to 1064 is being set? It's losing the daily uptrend. So now that 877 level is a must hold. In the weekend video, I talked about, you know, after this breakout, we still got to confirm the trend change. Bulls want to hold 830 on a pullback and confirm that uptrend. We got the ideal scenario as far as, all right, bulls are proving some follow through here. So now we just need to keep the daily uptrend and break 1064 because if we can't do that, the tightening weekly range is on the table for a lot of these individual US names. TCNNF remains... Uh, strong in the sense that it just broke the high of 1196. We got up to 1244. The short-term support here is 1101. So bulls want to maintain that level to keep full control. If we lose 11, 1101, we'll be shaping up 
weekly consolidation. We have the potential catalyst from Florida. If we do not get the, the Supreme Court in Florida knocking down the vote this week, that means it's going to be on the ballot. So yeah, by the end of this week, if we get to April, then the vote for Florida is going to be on the ballot. Again, I don't think that's going to mean, you know, a 10% day in these names, but I think it's just a little underlying uh, bid support of relative strength with these names having a little bit more focus from people. So as far as resistance, after this recent high of 1244, things are fairly limited here as far as clear levels. I'm looking at uh, 1240 was a level and then 1325. So TCNNF trading well and hitting those fresh highs. And that high that we just hit, highest price in over a year, 52 week highs. GTBIF, very clear double top at 1430 is now back in play. We're just under that level. Key short term support is 1292. Again, if we fail 1430 and lose the daily uptrend, then we look for a tightening weekly range. What would that look like? Something like this into a good bit of April. But we're knocking on the door of resistance. That's a good sign. If the bulls get over 1430, the next focus will be 1650. Just maintain the daily uptrend to keep control for the bulls. Cure relief. So this weekly chart has been tightening up long, a long period of time here where I'm just viewing it like this. And again, same thing. Anything under 579 is just a lower high. It's possible we keep tightening up. The most important daily support in the short term is 475. Lose the daily uptrend, tightening weekly ranges are most likely. Keep the daily uptrend and the bulls are going to try and break this resistance. In an ideal world, we see rotation back out of Canadian names into U.S. names, but who knows how it's going to play out. We can only just take it one day at a time. So still in, I forgot OGI, still in MSOS, TCNNF, OGI, and day trading these Canadian names. So CGC, massive volume. At what point did the volume stand out? Pretty much, you know, a comparative volume analysis is very helpful. But for me, it's, you know, the, the common pattern of volume on the five minute time frame is the highest volume candle is the first one of the day, and then it drops off from there. Let's look at the NASDAQ. So here's the NASDAQ. This is what you will see on, on the vast majority of charts. So what does that mean? That means when you get a volume candle that is the highest in the morning that takes place 15, 20 minutes into the day, it stands out as saying, this is something different. This is not the normal pattern. And so we had CGC do that 15 minutes into the trading day. The first candle of volume was just under 700,000. And then 15 minutes, the third candle, we almost doubled that volume. That stands out as bing, something in your brain going, this is a bit unusual. That's a lot of bull volume for this time in the morning. And then, you know, I'm making an assumption here, but this is a short squeeze, obviously. Many short squeezes are just, you know, everybody rushing to buy the ask and the, you know, the price shooting up. This was a more contained orderly short squeeze where, you know, I'm making some assumptions, but, you know, I know traders that use bots. This to me, this is the two minute time frame. This is just a bot that is buying every single time the two minute EMA 12 is tested as support. And from that point, you know, just complete bull control. Now, are, is the bot programmed for two minute EMA 12? No, it could be three minute EMA 11 or five minute EMA eight, or maybe it's not an EMA. Maybe it's a simple moving average. Maybe it's some other, you know, what, whatever the input is that they're using, I can say that the two minute 12 period EMA is pretty much as good as it gets for showing me where that is. You know, I'm not saying they're using this, this, this indicator, but I'm saying this indicator is aligning with whatever they're using. And so we had some aggressive chart guys members on Friday that were buying, uh, you know, these little periods of consolidation. And, you know, you don't want to be chasing, but as a trader, there are levels where I can keep my risk small. There's, look at all these double bottoms, 528, we tighten up, we hold 528. As soon as you hold 528 two times, if you want to be aggressive, I'm in at 530, I put a stop at 527. I'm risking three to four pennies depending on slippage. And the reward is 10 to 20 times that as a possibility. Then you look down here, 554, we pull back, we hold it. So it's just giving you levels to play off of 
And then into the afternoon, we have something called a late, a late morning trade strategy, Google on chart guys. This is a great trade strategy that I've been employing a whole lot the last few years. And essentially it means, watch the video for the details, but when, the, when you get a clear direction for all morning, the aggressive entry is then 15 minute consolidation to look for a higher low using EMA 12. Shout out to new chart guys members, Amy, who used this for an entry based on that concept. And again, it was the same thing. And so, you know, this morning, on this morning, I long TLRY, we'll talk about that in just a moment. I missed this initial move on CGC. And so, you know, I could look at this and say, oh my God, it's already up. You know, at that point, normally I would never buy because it's already up. It's gone up 40% on the day, but I know it's a short squeeze that makes me more aggressive. And I know, okay, 15 minute higher low is the most likely scenario. So let's zoom into the five minute. Again, look at these levels to play off of. So I made an entry down here around 608 or so. And then we see a weak bounce and I, I sold partial there. And then we double bottoms. And unfortunately I left the computer at this point in time to go out into the garden real quick. And so I didn't keep the runner as long as I should have. But again, we held support by a penny. It gives the bulls a clear level to play off of. And then we see continuation. Again, here, 688, 688. We hold the level to the penny. That shows me bulls are defending this level. If it holds, we're going higher. If we lose it, I want to be protective. I could use that level as a stop. It's an extra 8% of follow through from that point. So again, that's as a trader, as a full-time trader, that's how I make entries while chasing, but very clearly limiting my risk. And so we ran into the end of the day. There was a pullback after hours. This is hourly consolidation taking back after hours. It may be healthy. You know, if, if bulls can open up seven, eight, you know, up near the high, because the last thing the bulls want to do is fail the high, $8. So if, if Monday rolls around and we open just under eight and we fail it, we're going to see some pullback on the morning. That pullback can be 10 to 15% because of how hard we ran. I was doing some trading after hours Friday, just little 10 cent flips. Because again, when you have this much volatility, you know, I'm not being greedy. I'm just, give me a little piece. You're just I'm just stashing it away. Give me a little bit more, a little bit more. That's just my trading style. Uh, knowing that, you know, every single day there's more opportunities, whether it's here or in other names. But key short-term support is now 686 and it's all about $8. Just keep in mind, when this short squeeze tops out, if there's a headline on top of it, you know, awesome. Follow through even more. If there's no headline, we're going to look back at history and anticipate the same things will keep happening. Fade. I expect these names to lose 25 to 50% when the top of this short squeeze is hit if there's no news catalyst. We're just going to look to give back a lot of this. Bears are going to be salivating at their new entry to try and hold for months again. So just be aware that it can very easily give back a lot of these gains. So if you are just trading this move, you are being very protective with stop losses to ensure that you are not going to become a bag holder. And for me, I'm in the conservative period of my trading career. And my priority number one is not giving back capital. Priority number two, add more profit to the cake, icing on the cake. If you're looking to be aggressive, your number one is don't leave profits on the table, be aggressive and try and capitalize. So Again, it all depends on individual mindsets, but I would much rather get my 2%, 3%, 2%. And then when it pulls back, I don't lose a dollar. And that's that. So that's my style. As far as, you know, from here, if we get over $8 on Monday, 835 is a biggie. That would be the highest level in a long time. And again, you know, everybody coping on social media saying, well, if you zoom out, you know, these names are still crushed. Absolutely. So again, this is just a trading opportunity as it always was, as we talked about last week. These names are just for trading, but it's the whole sector benefiting. A lot of it has to do with the plumbing. The fact that, again, the amount of dollar volume that I can throw around in these names with market buys, I cannot do that in the U.S. names. So let's just say that, you know, make, let's make an assumption that CGC did have an automated trading bot. You can't use an automated trading bot like that on an OTC name. There is not the volume and the liquidity to allow that to happen. So, and then you don't have the options market that these names have. So it's, that's why it's happening. You just have to keep in mind, you know, I know it's frustrating for the fundamental people out there. As I've always been saying, you know, fundamentals, they're not dying. They're always going to have a place, but they're much less relevant. I mean, how many examples do we need? TLRY, running to 300, GameStop, all these things. Like it's clearly telling us, hey, this game is changing. And you have to rem remember there's people like me that view this literally as a video game of flashing numbers. 
And I'm going to trade CGC when the flashing numbers mean that, you know, I can potentially benefit. And there's enough people out there like me with that mindset. That's the game we're playing now. Don't hate the player, hate the game. It's very different than it was 10 years ago. Social media is a big part of that. New trading instruments are a big part of that. ETF, zero day option expiration, all this stuff. The game is constantly changing and just have to accept it. If we were still getting our, you know, stock prices from the newspaper every morning, fundamentals, 100% is the way to go. Absolutely. It's not that market. All right, I'm going to give some more examples here for trading because Reddit's already talking smack. But uh, CGC, so we got a question on this move. And, you know, is the later morning trade strategy still in play for the 15-minute higher or lower? Or is it too late in the day? Aggressive bulls are looking for 15-minute higher lows, hoping for a strong close in the weekend hype. Patients got to wait for the hourly. So we have a 15-minute stair step pattern higher low every single candle. It breaks. Now we're looking for a 15-minute higher low. We know if EMA 12 holds, the bulls keep full control. Let's zoom in and see what that looked like as it was forming. So I was watching this knowing I'm looking for a 15-minute higher low, and I was on the one-minute chart. I see this drop. I see a, a drop to 606 and then a bounce attempt. So I say, all right, bulls are going to try and hold six psychological. Weak bounce attempt doesn't go anywhere. Fresh low but no follow through. We hit a new low and go straight into a bounce. That's my trigger to buy. I literally bought on that candle. And so I buy 10,000 shares of CGC at 609. So on that move up, my stop can now go under $6 and I sell partial very quickly on that initial bounce. I sell half, you know, 609. Maybe I'm selling it. I forget exactly what it was. Six, you know, 616 or something. And so then what? So now my break even, 609 to 616, seven cent gain. Now my break even is 602. So I can stick my stop at 599 and be risking a tiny loss, an insignificant loss. And if we follow through, my reward obviously is fairly significant. So then, you know, we get some nice follow through. Again, as I mentioned, I fumbled this a bit in the sense that, you know, I should have just left my stop and gone outside and did my thing. But I like the nice gains, you know, that was... I sold into this move up. My target was 639. We didn't get there by a penny, but I sold my second half of the position in the 620s, I believe. And again, it's just locking in four figure trades in the span of a few minutes. And if I just do that three or four times in a day, then it's, it's great. The next trade that I took after more upside, came back inside after watering the garden. So the way I play from here, it's certainly chasing, right? I don't want to buy the top but I buy off EMA support. In this instance, it was a five minute EMA. I sell partial and I place a risk-free stop. So on the five minute time frame, we've got, this was Ray, let's see, entry 690. So this is, this is even later. You know, this is right here. I see a pullback to 688. All right, short-term support. We then double bottom to the penny. I make my entry. So I'm in at, 697. Again, I sell partial at 708. Now my break even is down in the low 690s. I stick a stop under 688. I'm risking a tiny bit and I can ride it up from there. And I kept that one until the end of the day. So that ends up being a 10% trade on my runner position. Just little base hits, little pieces of the pie, not the Mondo move. But every single time I'm making an entry, my risk is clearly defined. I know where my stop goes and I'm playing off of support. Tilray. So why did I buy Tilray on a break of $2? Because Tilray was really tight. And we know when things are tight that uh, we're going to get a break. And I liked where, you know, I could have a clear stop nearby. I like the risk reward. I saw CGC making a move up hardly even at that point, 9.32. I'll grab TLRY on a $2 break, see if it can break bull. So $2 wasn't the key resistance. The key resistance was 202 and 204. Why did I buy under resistance? When things are tight, for me, if you're breaking $2, the probability that you're going to follow through and break the resistances right behind it are high. If we were extended into testing $2 with an hourly RSI that's overbought and you know we've been running for days really significantly, then it's a different story. But comfortable grabbing the break at two, and then just scaled out a bit on the way up, have a little bit of a swing position runner at this point, but a nice, you know, 15% move. And again, hourly consolidation will be inevitable. There is a support 
down at 215. Bulls need to break 237. The, the high of the previous day is so important on the morning. If you break it, you know, you can break it and not see much follow through, but if you can't break it, you're not going anywhere. So that's what we're watching on everything for Monday. Also, if we gap up, we're going to look for some pullback and some consolidation as well. We're also going to be watching for backburners. What's the response to first five-minute oversold conditions on CGC the next time it happens? I'm going to be trading it for a bounce. You know, let's say we drop down to whatever price, get five-minute oversold. I make an entry or two. My stop is based on dollar amount that I'm willing to risk on that trade. If we bounce 3%, I exit half. I stick my stop under the low. That's either the hourly high or low, and I have a great entry, or I stop out break even. That's how I trade these kinds of moves. TLRY after 237, it's all about 254. And that would be the highest level in many months if we were able to break it. Again, just a trade for me. But we got, you know, the OGI, just beautiful follow through, nice volume. So we filled a gap. The 268 was a gap fill to be watching from way back here. And now we're looking at 292, definitely a bit extended, higher or low every single day for six days. We're going to look for a pullback. Bulls want to see first hourly oversold conditions, mark a daily high or low. But it's clearly, you know, benefiting from the, the CGC move. And again, you know, you look at this and say, well, it's underperforming CGC this past week. Absolutely. But it's way outperforming CGC on the big scale or the big grand scheme of things here. We're hitting levels from back on April 10th. If CGC were hitting levels from back on April 10th, we'd be trading up at $15, $16. So we're, we're 50% where we were back there, where OGI is back at these levels. Weekly EMA 12, I will have a runner position in this name as long as weekly EMA 12 is support. And we'll look at 292 and three psychological. Hourly uptrend is our guide. New short-term support, 262. I will be taking some profit on this swing. You know, this swing at this point is up 40 or 50%. And so you know, a little bit more upside and I'm going to exit half the position, maybe reload it on next daily consolidation. But again, just not going to be greedy with the name up over 40% in just the last six days. For me, it's just always locking in profit. I just, you know, things don't go wrong if you're always locking in profit. The worst thing that can happen is you leave some money on the table. I can accept that. SNDL, another big, big bull move, big volume, and breaking 171 was a great sign. Then we're looking at 176. Only broke that by a penny. So that's still a level that we got to keep an eye on. And then we look up towards $2, really. I mean, there's other levels in there, 190. But uh, key short-term resistance hourly, have we consolidated? No. So it won't surprise us the next time we see hourly consolidation. Hopefully five minute oversold marks that hourly high or low. And you know, how long can this move go? That's just the, the question from here. And everything seeing it in the Canadian side, ACB, again, just dilution, death, debt spiral. But when everybody gets on one side of the boat and there's too many bears, they get squeezed out, then you get this. So again, look at last time. Oh my God, what a move. Three days, 100 plus percent. We're back, minus 65%. Cautious, the slow bleed once the top is in. All right, psychedelic names, MNMD is standing out leaps and bounds ahead of peers. So I expect a lower high compared to 1110, but I'm very you know, pleased with what the bulls have done in follow through here. And so I'm gonna be watching for something like this. Bulls ideally wanna hold EMA 12 on the next pullback, but tightening daily range on watch, no red flags for the bulls whatsoever, but it's a very different looking chart than its peers. CMPS, look at the weekly chart, three weeks of red. The red flag was confirming the bull flag with zero follow through. So compare that to MNMD, it's a diff, very different looking chart. ATAI, three weeks of red. So not ideal for the sector, attention back to cannabis. And again, the way that I did this, my style of trading, you know, ATAI, I'm already in a swing position. I add to it on the hype day with news. I see the high of the previous day only break by a penny. And that's a red flag for me, two penny bull break. So I exit partial position in the 220s and then I stick my runner stop under 190. If we lose a daily uptrend, I'm all out. And we did, I stop out of my runner. I end up with some profits 
Not a huge win by any means, but I protected against the pullback. And so now I have no position in anything but MNMD, the strongest name, because anything else that I had a position in got stopped out when there was a sign of weakness. And now my focus shifts back to the Canadian cannabis names. And then maybe it'll shift to you. I'm just always shifting around. So that's where we stand. Tier two names in US cannabis, uh, not really doing a whole lot. A Y R W F. Trying to get over this short term hump. You can see, you know, the tier one's definitely benefiting way more. You know, Tilray is up here. But it's not just AYRWF, it's uh, SN. Nope, it is TSNDF. Again, just sideways, trying to get over 185 to clear a resistance zone. But again, nowhere near the recent high. So we got the tier ones benefiting from that spike up over the last couple of weeks. I mean, they're going up. And in percentage wise, it's 20% move, but compared to where we were, still got a lot of work to do for some of these tier twos to get back up to those levels. But uh, again, the broader market is just so strong right now. This is such a good time for a headline catalyst and we'll see if we get it. That will be my cue to go real aggressive, but until then, one day at a time. Feel free to ask any questions. Again, thanks again for the likes and the shares and the support. And let's see what this sector, these sectors can do for the rest of 2024. Do good things.